Hello. What I'm here to do today is give a little demonstration of administering an individual JBoss application server instance using the command line interface tool that comes with um, JBoss AS7. Um, so what I've got going on over here is a couple little console windows. And over on the right, um, this window is basically it's open to the bin directory in the JBoss AS7 distribution and just looking at what's in there you see there's a number of different scripts um, Windows and you know Unix Linux versions um, and the one I'm going to be running is standalone.sh which basically is used to launch a individual standalone instance of the JBoss application server just an individual server process that you know accepts requests um, there's some other scripts over here. The most important one, to, um, other one that you might want to know about is domain.sh, which launches what's called a JWAS AS domain controller. And that domain controller is a central admin point that can administer multiple JWAS application server instances. And it will actually also, if I ran that, given the way the configuration, the default configuration file would actually spin up a couple of um, application server instances in separate processes right here on the same machine. But what we're going to focus on today is just the standalone mode. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run standalone.sh and this starts up an AS server process. This is basically um, a general EE type um, application server configuration. It has all the standard EE services running in it. Um, it starts in a little less than four seconds. Um, brings up a you know, web server, an EGB container, a JMS con com um, server, etc. Okay, so now I got my server running, and over here on the left, this is actually located in the same directory, this terminal window. Um, but what I'm going to run is jbossadmin.sh, which basically is our little command line interface tool. And I'm going to pass to it um, dash dash connect, which basically tells it go ahead and connect to an application server um, when you launch. So it does that, and it tells me, okay, it's connected to a server listening on localhost 9999, which is what this this process over here is open a management socket on. Um, you know, we could configure this to listen on a different interface, different port, and we could pass a, an argument to when we launch the CLI telling it to connect to a different IP address and port, but this is the default. Okay, so what we want to do is look at basically what we can do with the CLI is um, mess around with the, the management tree um, of the AS. So all of the various manageable resources within the AS are all organized in a tree. And all um, nodes in the tree are basically identified by a key value pair, where the key is the type of the node um, and the value is a, a specific name for an individual node. Um, so since the, those key value pairs, they're, they're all organized in a tree structure, so you can maneuver through the management resources available from the AES by using um, essentially equivalent to file system type commands. Um, so the CLI provides that kind of thing. So for example, I want to CD, you know, like you would on a file system into a resource, a management resource. And what I want to go into is one of the subsystems exposed by the AES. So all the various, um, the web server is a subsystem, the EGB container is a subsystem, JSDA is a subsystem, um, the uh, the messaging provider is a subsystem, so that's what I'm interested in here. So um, I want to go into the subsystem for the messaging. So I want to go into a subsystem, and then the CLI provides a lot of tab completion. So I just type sub, and boom, hit tab, and I get all sorts of all the different options. And what I'm interested in is messaging. So I've maneuvered down into the into the um, messaging subsystem. CD takes me back up. And hit up and down arrow to get back to previous commands. So see, you can go back into the messaging subsystem. Now, what I want to do is execute a command. Um, so hit the colon to tell it I'm executing a command, and then start typing and do tab completion. And it will give me the, the available commands at that level in the tree. And a, a command that's pretty much available everywhere is read resource, which lets me see everything and basically all the information about that resource. And then I add the recursive equals true argument um, as a parameter, and that basically says, okay, give me the resource and its ch children, any child resources underneath it in the tree. And you can see it gives me a whole lot of information about the messaging subsystem, what its configuration looks like. Um, one thing you see down here low is we've got, um, let me move this up a little bit. There we go. We've got a couple cues there. 
um, JMSQ, one under JMSQ, they've got one TestQ, and then entries is where it's bound in Jinji, and then there's a topic too. Now if I go over here on the right, open this little text editor window, um, this is actually showing the standalone.xml file, which is the configuration file that um, the AS read. It's the single configuration file for the AS, and it basically tells it um, when it starts up, you know, what, what configuration to use. And it's got all sorts of stuff in here. Um, different, you can see different subsystems. You know, and here we have the subsystem for the messaging. We have the configuration for the messaging subsystem. And if I scroll down, yeah, connection factories, and here we got my queues test. So the information over here in the XML file actually pretty much matches along with, as you'd expect, to what's in the um, when you look at it through the management client. Okay, so that's basically the, the simple setup we've got, and a little bit about how to maneuver around. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to add a JMS another queue. And uh, I'm also going to deploy a little application that's going to work with that queue. So what I'm going to do is do a little convenience command called just type add and hit the tab key and it says oh here's some various commands that are available to you beginning with add. So add JMS queue and then dash dash help will let me find out more information about this command and it will tell me oh various things I can type in and it looks like mm, I have to type dash dash name and then the name of the queue. That's the required argument. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have to do to start a queue. Um, but when I deploy this queue, um, I'm going to also deploy a deployment that's going to work with it. And I want these two things to work together in kind of an atomic batch where I try to do both operations at the same time and they, they either succeed or fail as a unit. So I want to start a batch in the CLI just by typing the batch command. So now I've, I've begun a batch. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my queue and equals queue demo okay so that's the name of the queue and then I'm going to run the deploy command which will allow me to deploy content to the, to the application server and then I just start typing a file system path to where the content is and I'm using tab completion to, to get it there so okay so I'm going to add a queue and deploy, and deploy a, a web application that interacts with that queue. And then run batch. Batch executed successfully. I go over here to my window. You can see there's messages try to deploy the queue. And here, registered a web context called lucky winner, which is the context of my war. I go over here to my standalone XML file in the editor. It's reloaded the whole file, so I got to scroll back down to where it was, where the messaging stuff was. Here we go. And boom, we've got queue demo. It's added a new queue. Okay, scroll down further. There's a list of deployments, and now I have this new deployment in the configuration. So when you change things through the client, through the management interface, it persists the change back to the, to the configuration file. So your configuration file is a, always a reflection of your current configure, running configuration. That's the main point there. Um, bring up a little browser here um, and just show that this is a real, you know, I actually did something here. So I'm going to go to localhost 8080, which is the default port that um, JBoss AS listens on. And go to this lucky winter, lucky winner thing. Okay, what this little application does is basically you type in your name. Hit submit. It stores your name in a database, the, the default um, database, you know, example database that come, that ships with the AS, and it also sticks a, um, your name into a queue, into the queue that we deployed um, for later submission to see if you won, if you're the lucky winner. So okay, I'm going to enter a few names of people who are entering. Okay, so we've got some people who have entered. Okay, but we don't know who's won. The reason we don't know who's won is because there's no consumer for this queue to process the queue. So what I'm going to go over do here is go back into the CLI and go deploy a little application that um, is able to process the queue. Let me bring that up again. 
So I'll do another deploy command. Boom, it deployed that little application, came right up. And you can see when the application came up, I've got a logging. The application logs what it does to the console log. So, oh, it processes into for Brian, Steve, and Jim. Oh, it looks like Jim is a winner. Hey, Jim. Okay. So, just a kind of silly little application. I can stick a couple more names over here. You can see they're being processed. Oh, Mary's a winner too. Okay. So, basically, simple little demonstration of deploying a queue and a couple of an application that writes to the queue and one another one that reads from the queue and processes the queue. Now, what I, the final thing I'm going to do is do another batch and I'm going to remove all this stuff. So undeploy and just type J and tab and it figures out what's deployed. I'm going to de undeploy JMS drawing. I'm going to undeploy lucky winner war and I'm going to remove the queue. Run batch. You can see it did it all. And I go back to my XML configuration file. Scroll back down. And you can see that queue is gone. And those deployments are gone from the bottom. So, um, quit over here gets me out of the console. And essentially, that's it. Thank you.